If you're like me and like to share your adventures and catches on social media, you've probably invested some money into camera gear or just thinking about it. There are a lot of things to consider, so in this video I will show you how I capture my photos and videos on the water, what gear I use and why, and I'll also share some technical and creative tips with you so you can improve the quality of your photos and videos. Let's talk about capturing video first and then we'll talk about capturing photos at the end of the video. Before you buy any of the gear to capture video, you should ask yourself a few questions. What are you trying to accomplish and what kind of videos are you trying to create? If you are a tournament angler who wants to capture their catches, you will probably need a setup you can turn on and forget about rain or shine. Messing with cameras while dealing with the pressure of tournament fishing isn't something you want to deal with. If you want to make fun videos where there's nothing on the line, you could ease up on the setup. Most of the time your camera choice will be an action camera. GoPro cameras are the most popular out there and that's what I use as well. I think the most important features are the ability to power the camera externally and decent audio. But of course I think GoPro produces great quality images and video. Starting with power, you have a few options. You can stick to using internal GoPro batteries, you can add a compact power bank, or you can use a larger battery that you might already have in your kayak or a big power box like this. All these options have their advantages and disadvantages, so your decision will depend on what you are trying to achieve. Internal batteries keep your camera waterproof without any external accessories, but changing batteries once every hour or so can be frustrating especially if you are tournament fishing. External power will let you record for longer periods of time, non-stop. The only drawback is the side doors that make the camera waterproof need to be taken off. The camera is no longer waterproof. The good news is there are accessories that will keep your camera weather resistant while being externally powered. A company called 3BR Power Sports sells a special housing and a cable for your GoPro camera that lets you power it externally while maintaining solid weatherproofing. Good enough to record in the rain without worries. They make products for many GoPro models and you can also choose your cable length. Now let's talk about how you capture decent quality audio. I think with the Hero 7 and up you don't have to worry about external audio unless you want to up the production quality of your videos. One important accessory you want to get though is a foam wind case. It's very basic, but it helps to cut down on the wind noise. Depending on the model of your GoPro, you could also modify the frame of your camera to stop blocking the microphones and that will help with audio quality as well. Just dremel out or grind down the parts of the frame that block the microphones. The next level from that would be adding an external microphone or even a wireless microphone. That kind of a setup will require an adapter and I don't think there's a way to make it weather resistant unless you make something on your own. Either way, if you are making educational videos, better sound quality might be worth the investment. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's talk about how to mount the camera to the kayak and different angles you can use. The most common angles are overhead behind angler boom pole, short front angle, tall front angle, Head strap POV, chest strap POV. Overhead behind angler boom pole angle is best for setting the camera out of the way and capturing everything all the time. I think this angle is great for tournament anglers. Set this up with an external waterproof power source and you shouldn't have to worry about it all day. Short front angle is great for talking to the camera, capturing what the angler is doing and showing off catches. This can also be powered externally non-stop but the camera can be quickly turned on when you catch a fish, so you may not need external power for it. Tall front angle is the one I don't see done on kayaks at all, but I think it would be great for educational type videos or unique angles, especially if you stand up and fish a lot. Head strap POV is one of the most dynamic angles of them all. This angle is good for making the videos look like the viewer is present and is experienced what's in front of him. The disadvantages of this angle is wearing a camera on your head or over your hat for hours will start hurting your brains a little. Eventually you will start feeling the weight of the camera. Most likely you will be limited on powering the camera with batteries unless you keep your power supply in your life jacket, but the cable might get in the way. If you're powering a camera with batteries, you will be swapping them out every hour or so, which can definitely be annoying. 
chest strap POV is slightly less dynamic than the head strap, but it's still a good option. You will be able to run your camera with a power bank, which you can keep in the pocket of your life jacket. The camera will get in your way when you fish, but it's not bad at all. There are some creative angles you can incorporate in your videos to show yourself fishing, but I wouldn't recommend them being consistent angles for the whole length of the video. If you get more than one camera, you can use a variety of angles to make your videos more dynamic and interesting. And of course, you can use your phone to add additional angles, b-roll, talking parts, and you can make your videos much more interesting with just your phone. The main camera pole I used and purchased recently is a RAM Tough Pole and it's 48 inches. It's solid and secure and more importantly it allows me to get unique angles for videos and photos. For a front short angle you can use something like a Yak Attack, Dog Bone or a similar camera pole. As far as video settings go, you will probably need to find something custom that will work for you. Each camera might be different and they will perform differently. You need to consider a few things like how long and what you're recording, how much memory storage you need, and if your computer can handle editing higher quality video. I will go over most of the general video settings and what they do, and after that I will tell you the settings I use and why. Resolution is the quality of the image. The higher the resolution, the better it will look on a big screen, but will also take a lot more memory space. FPS or frames per second is pretty self-explanatory. The higher the frame rate, the more frames your camera is recording for every second. Settings of 24 to 30 are normal and don't have any room for slow motion. Settings of 60 and above are good for slow motion. Higher frame rate will take a little bit more memory space and will also heat up your camera quicker. FOV is the field of view, or simply how wide or narrow your image is. Super view is the widest setting you can use but it may not be available in some settings. Protune allows you to change more settings once you turn it on. Shutter controls the time the light has to pass to the sensor. It can be a bit confusing and can cause different effects, so keep it in on auto is a safe bet. EV Comp is the setting that tells the camera how bright or how dark you want your video to be recorded. Keeping it at zero is a safe bet, but sometimes on super bright days you could try a negative 0.5 setting or boost it a little at early mornings. White balance changes the color tone of your video. It can make it look blue, neutral or warm. I keep it on auto all the time. ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor. You can limit how sensitive you want it to be to light. Higher ISO settings might allow you to get brighter image at darker times but you will notice that it will look very grainy and noisy. Sharpness is pretty self-explanatory. This setting adds sharpness to your image which can be a good or a bad thing. I keep it on medium for videos. Color is a setting of the color profile of your videos or photos. Flat color is designed to retain more data and to be fixed in editing. GoPro color provides a saturated and contrasty image. There are also some audio settings you can play with but I keep them turned off because it adds more processing to audio which can mess up the sound. So these are the settings I use the most. I stick around the middle as far as resolution and I don't record high frame rates for slow motion primarily because my camera gets overheated after hours of non-stop recordings. Even at 30 frames per second it will overheat on a warm day. The rest of the settings are set to keep the video quality normal and won't require any additional fixing in editing. These are the settings I recommend for just hitting record and forgetting about it. You can try these out and if you do not like them, adjust them as needed. This should cover all the tips I could think of as far as recording video. You got many options as far as power on the camera and many angles to choose from. Your choice should depend on what is the most convenient to you and what kind of videos you want to make. Now let's talk about capturing photos. A lot of tips of recording video will apply to photos but I like to keep it really simple when I go for taking photos of my catches on the water. Most of the time I power my GoPro with an internal battery. There's no need to make it more complicated for photos. The angles I choose really depend on the look I'm going for. You can use any of the angles I mentioned before. I like to use low side angles to show off my kayak and catch together. You get many options as far as camera angles, but I suppose the only limitation could be the camera pole you use. 
the easiest way to get your framing right is to use your phone to connect to the camera. The newer GoPros have screens at the front so you may not need to. Once the photo is lined up, I use voice commands on my GoPro to actually take a photo. Now let's talk about photo settings. First, your camera probably has different photo modes, so let's talk about those that apply to us the most. You can take photos in a burst mode or a single shot photo. Burst mode takes many photos during a few seconds and usually you have the ability to change the burst rate. You can play around with these and see which setting works best for you for the shot you're going for. Single shot photo just takes one photo like a regular camera. This is the setting I use the most because of the format I use for my photos. Your camera might have the ability to take photos in a RAW format and that basically means that the photo files are larger because they save more data and have less processing applied to them. My camera can only take one raw photo every 5 seconds, so I just skip on the burst mode. Newer GoPro cameras should be a lot better with raw files, so you need to check how often your camera can take raw photos in a burst mode if you wanted to. Raw format will require special software to edit it, like Lightroom or Photoshop. I am a photographer and I edit all of my photos, so this workflow works for me. If you don't have access to software to edit photos, you will have to stick to JPEG formats. JPEG formats are basically compressed, ready to go photos. It can be a good or a bad thing, but I like to have more data to play with when I edit, so I do not use JPEG files. These are the settings I use when I take raw photos in a single shot mode. I use these settings because I edit my photos later and I like to get the most out of my photos. The shutter is set to auto because I'm usually not taking action shots. EV comp is negative 0.5 and that allows the camera to record more data in the highlights which I can then bring back in editing. Color is flat and sharpness is low because I can also fix that when editing. If you aren't able to or don't want to deal with complications of a raw file, just stick to JPEG and change the settings so you don't have to edit them later. Keep the shutter on auto for most of the shots and if you're going for an action shot, you need to change it to at least 1 over 1000 that will allow you to freeze the action without blur. Set EV comp to 0, but if you find that the sky looks too bright, you can knock it down to negative 0.5. Assuming you don't want to edit your photos or only want to make minimal adjustments, keep the color as GoPro and sharpness at medium. You can try flat color if you want to edit it later, but I can't promise you that it will look the best it can since it's captured in a JPEG format. And of course, try these settings out and see if you like the results. If you don't like the results, change the settings or keep them in default. The final tip I'd like to mention is the position of the sun in your photos. I would recommend positioning the sun somewhere out of the frame. The light coming from the side and slightly behind is my favorite. Front light is good too, but can be a little bit boring. And the light coming straight from behind can be either too dramatic or not look good at all. I hope this video was at least a little bit useful and I hope you found the answers you were looking for. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.